students i am alpa rupala assistant professor from lg institute of engineering and technology computer department welcome to the lecture series of mobile computing and wireless communication unit number 2 semi topic cellular wireless network topics to be covered in this lecture first of all we will understand about what is the cellular network how the cellular network is being formed then after cell geometry of your cellular network what kind of shape should be there then after we will learn about the range of the antenna and just a brief and overview of generation of communication technology so first of all uh, we are considering what is cellular network so when we are talking about the uh, wireless network it is not like that that everything is wireless okay it is just only your mobile device is being connected to wireless end point only okay all the other fundamentals could be wired or it could be wireless okay but the end fundamental the last link of connection to your mobile devices should be wireless okay so uh, when we are talking about the geographical area of earth so this zero uh, this geographical area is being divided into sub parts known as cells that's why it is being called as cellular network even though your mobile phone is also known as cell phone because of this reason only because it is based on cellular network technology okay we uh, just learned about the generation okay 1g 2g 2.5g and 3g but before this 1g 2g and 2.5g and 3g there were another generation known as okay 0g now this 0g generation was not having cellular network at that time okay here are just the example of your cellular network just one uh, image to represent you there is one whole building and a road and any other building all are connected by one tower and this tower is transferring signal to the different mobile devices it can send the signal to persons it can send the persons which are moving into a car in a building everywhere okay okay so i was talking about the 0g in 0g what was there your whole area your whole city was connected through one single tower okay in 0g generation your whole area was being connected by a single tower okay so what was the disadvantage of it suppose at this particular location if one user is there then your data then your trans receiver antenna have to uh, generate the signal with very high intensity to reach over there okay if this particular tower is collapsed then whole city will be disconnected clear okay interference of this particular signal if we are trying to reach to the corner of this area then at this particular location the person can have a very large sound okay a very large sound or we can call it as a noise okay cross talk can be there your available frequency is not being reused if someone is using it okay bandwidth requirement is higher all these are worthy all this were the disadvantages of 0g generation okay and also if we talk about the high power generation of antenna then the heat production will be more and if the heat production will be more then the collapse of antenna risk is very much of higher so to reduce all these fundamentals in cellular network what we are we are just replacing a single high power transmission antenna into smaller low power transmission many antennas 
This particular antenna is having a bandwidth and a frequency. This bandwidth and frequency is dedicated to this CT users. Okay. And this is not being reused if someone is already using it. So we can accommodate a very less number of users by this particular fundamental. But look over here in which we are dividing our frequency into red and sky color. Okay, our black frequency is being divided into red and sky color. Your bandwidth is being divided into a red and sky color. Okay, now what we are doing, we are giving this frequency in a manner that no frequency can interference each other and it can be reused. Like this sky frequency, then after red frequency and then after again sky frequency. That means the interference of this antenna and this antenna cannot be happened because we are having the separate frequency or we can say this frequency gap is there between these two antenna cover ridge. Okay, radiating ridge. This two antenna covered radiating range we are having the separate frequency that is red frequency. Same as over here, same as over this particular location also. Okay, so we are dividing our a big area into smaller sub part and each sub part is having separate antenna. Each antenna is having separate frequency range and this frequency range is uh, being arranged or assigned as there is no interference. Okay, so likewise in previous one, if I want to reach over here, then this antenna have to produce a very large power, right? But now if I want to reach over here, then this antenna will take care of it. If I want to reach over here, then this antenna will take care of it. If I want to reach over here, then this area antenna will take care of it. Okay, so your whole geographical area is being subdivided into smaller parts. So now the advantages is there. Okay, but there is also a disadvantage that frequency arrangement plan should be there. We have to divide this geographical area into equal parts that no area should be left out or no area should be having the overlapping of frequency. Okay. So this is all about the cellular network. Advantages, high capacity is there, less transmission power is required, local interference is not there and robustness. That means if whole tower, if single tower was collapsed, then whole city was disconnected. But if there uh, in the cellular network, if single tower is collapsed, then we are having another option of another tower okay whole city is not being disconnected disadvantage infrastructure needed handover is also needed now what is the handover basically we will learn this in gsm topic in very much of detail and frequency planning for re frequency reutilization so now what is the uh, what should be the cell uh, geometry in a cellular network Suppose we are thinking about let's the cell to be in the form of equilateral triangle. Okay, we are dividing our area into equal equal triangle. In this, suppose this is my area which is being divided into a triangular form in which at center of it I am having my antennas and this antenna will always radiate in a circular pattern. Okay, in omnidirectional pattern, in omnidirectional pattern, it will radiate in all the direction and this direction will take the form of shape circle. Okay, so your transmission range will be in a form of circle. Okay, so if we talk about the center of this triangle, then this is here. Okay, and this is the sky color range of your antenna. Same as here it is antenna and this is the transmission range. Then what about this whole area? This whole area is not having the coverage range of your this tower or this tower. Same as if we talk about of having a very large transmission power antenna. Then, then also your particular antenna range will overlap with 
another one okay if i talk about over here and this antenna range is this and this antenna range is with higher capacity then it can uh, form or it can take over the left out area region but it will overlap by the another region so we cannot use equilateral triangle let's think about the equilateral circle sorry square again there is area which is divided into a equal sized square in which at the center of it we are having our antenna the radiation pattern is circle so now we can see that this particular area is having no coverage range okay so this cannot also be any option then we are moving forward to another shape that is equilateral regular hexagon now look over here this is the diagram of hexagon okay at center of it we are having the antenna and this is the radiation pattern other than any of the geographical shape the hexagon is having very better shape you can see okay only this much of region is being left out but actually we will see in detail that we are uh, only not having the transmission rate we can have the detection range the detection range of this antenna will cover this left out region okay so uh, we can see that the advantage of this hexagon is very easy this shapes are very easy and manageable we can cover the large area by lesser number of hexagon pattern okay if we talk about the uh, area area covered then it is almost covering all of your area no area is being left out or no area is being uh, overlapped okay less number of cell can cover large number of geographical area so this all are the advantage of using hexagonal cell we were talking about the hexagonal shape this particular radiation range okay so there is basically three kind of radiation range in any of antenna the first suppose the antenna is established over here okay suppose your antenna is established over here and then after the first range the first radius range is known as transmission range and the second range is known as detection range and the third range is known as interference range in transmission range the signal is having very high power and lesser interference in detection range there is the low frequency or low strength of your signal but the interference is little bit higher and in third range that is interference range you cannot detect the signal over here in interference range you cannot detect the signal over here with that much of strength but this particular range is are uh, doing or creating noise for another antenna so this is the interference range so just like previously this is what your antenna over here and this is the transmission range and the leftover region will be covered by the detection range okay so this was all about the range of antenna now next now if we talk about the generation of communication technology to so each and every technology is uh, being transferred from one step to another step to another step by the technologies which they are using like in 1g there were different technology in 2g there were different technology according to each and every technology uh, which is being established then after protocols also de uh, developed then according to them the bandwidth the frequency requirement all are being changed day by day okay so we were having from 1g 2g 3g right now we are using 4g and the future technology is 5g so we have just seen the overview of your generation of your technology now uh, just summarizing the whole your lecture 
first of all we understood what is the cellular network how the 0g was formed then after cell geometry your cell is kind of hexagonal cells and then after range of antenna transmission range detection range and interference range and then after just a brief of generation of communication technology now this technology we will understand in much detail in next lecture thank you we will meet in our next lecture